Internet Mail, we started using it years ago to say hello to friends in text messages. Now many of us are spending half a day or more working with some email related tasks. Microsoft Outlook is the most common browser my business customers are using to organize their mail. I've watched it change over the years with more and more features being added to help business users become better organized and time efficient with data being transferred between themselves, clients, and others. You're all using it and fretting over it when it locks up and cripples your workday. Well, I'm happy to fix it for you when you call me, but for some of you I've done much more than that, and today I'd like to tell the rest of you about something you can do to save yourselves from hours of labor every week. Though Outlook is a good way to send and receive data, it can be problematic when used to store and manage it. As years pass, your Outlook accounts are growing very large. So too is the size of email data you send every day. This becomes problematic for you and your email administrator who is responsible for delivering your mail. Outlook stores your mail, potentially thousands of messages, attachments, calendar events, and more within one single file. A congestion contributing to performance failures, lockups, and data loss. And the options for organizing data within Outlook are very limited. And even when working properly is slow and sluggish because all activity is within one humongous file that's often on the verge of crashing. This is when my phone starts ringing, when I'm told you can't work day to day wondering when Outlook will crash again, or how many times you'll have to restart it on Friday mornings to access an email with an attachment you need for printing payroll checks. Eventually, be it by conversation with me or another way, you begin spending portions of your business day extracting data from every email, your Excel spreadsheets, PDF, Word, PowerPoint, and other data, into a hierarchy of folders outside of Outlook in Microsoft Documents or some other place. Doing so, you're no longer crippled by dependency on Outlook, and when using the Outlook program, it becomes more reliable because it performs much better when it's working with smaller files. And now that the panic has passed because everything is working again, your focus eventually changes as you're no longer content simply because everything's working again. You return to looking at your computer as so many other business people do and the way and large reason it was created for saving time enabling you to do other things. Weeks pass, you realize you're working more efficiently, you're better organized and you haven't the surprise or worries about getting to your data but you also notice you're spending a lot of time moving your data from every email every day and you begin to say to yourself there must be a way to automate the tedious and timely everyday task. You've already taken the time searching through rules Outlook offers that automates much like mail delivery from specific senders or mail with specific words that can be automatically sent to folders you designate within the Outlook program but you haven't found a way to automate the extraction of attachments to folders outside of the program. Well, Outlook doesn't provide that feature, but it can be modified to do exactly that and more. Let me show you. I've written several customized Visual Basic scripts within Outlook that allow me to export attachments of specified criteria with a simple touch of a button. Let me show you one. Here's a script I wrote for Chris, a CompITS field technician who emails timesheets to myself and our invoicing department daily. Before I show you the automated extraction process of Chris's attachments, let me show you the old way of doing things, the way you are likely doing it. First, I go to a folder I made where all of Chris's timesheets are kept. This folder is monitored by the Outlook Rules Wizard, which ensures that the timesheets and only the timesheets from Chris are automatically delivered to this location. What I do next to extract an attachment to another location is double click on a file, right mouse over one of the attachments, go to Save As, and I drill my way to his folder location. and I click Save. Now I'm going to have to do this for every timesheet that I have. Now that one's done, so I go to the next.
Now you can see that there's not many in here. That's simply because I renamed the folder to show you how this is done and how they build from the beginning. I renamed the, the existing folder that he has to this one here, and this is where all of his normal timesheets are in. This may not seem like a difficult process. However, if you have many attachments to transfer each day and many different people to do this for, minutes can quickly turn to hours each week performing such tasks. Now let me show you how I do this today. First, to make this easier for you to see, I'm going to minimize the size of my Outlook program. As you can see, I already drilled through the path to uh, where the folder is going to be stored. If you look up top, you can see the path that the data is going to be stored into, the folder it will be stored in. I changed the data location so that you can see it fill into the folder as it propagates. Next, it doesn't matter where I am in Outlook. I can be at any part of this. All I have to do is run the macro. Now, the macro shortcut I put up top here on this particular toolbar, simply click on it. Here are several different macros, several different Visual Basic scripts I've written. And this is the one that I have for Chris. All I have to do is click on it. As soon as it starts running, you can see it's filling up the folder. It's up to 135. Whoops, counting pretty fast, 174, 187. And you can see that it's done. I get a message here that says you can find the files here. It shows the path that the files are located in. Just click OK. Then if you like, you can scroll through these and take a look at the different files that were extracted to the folder. Now that's a lot quicker than manually extracting each attachment one by one from each email. There are many customizations that can be made that I have made with Visual Basic scripts. I can program a script to select mail from a specified user, from specified dates, times. I can extract only PDF documents, Excel documents, or any document type at all. I can select by attachment size of any variation of size and I can do it for one or any number of email sources and transfer the data to any location on your hard disk, network, or even to a printer if you need to have that done. If you or someone you work with is spending hours every week performing these type of tasks, please let me know and I'll put an end to it. I've already invested the time writing the scripts that can be imported into your Outlook program remotely, meaning I won't even have to visit your office. All I'll need to do is discuss with you the emails, types of data you want extracted, and where you'd like them extracted to. Just send an email to me, dan at compits.net, and type export attachments in the subject header. I'll take care of the rest.